Justice Department that is so suspect and that has been caught uh, with all the energy scams and Benghazi and Fast and Furious and the revolving doors and just unprecedented election fraud and giving driver's license to illegals and letting them vote, the Justice Department defending that. Everything they've been doing, it makes Nixon look like an angel. And, and by the way, he was not an angel. I'm not a fan of Richard Nixon. I kind of am compared to Obama. I never used to believe in lesser of two evils. But man, the point is he's got a blank check to power grab and a blank check to give billions to his friends and all these fake energy scams. So to have that Justice Department arresting the governor, former governor of Virginia, uh, who was getting money to promote a supplement company when he got out. And it's normally, because I follow politics for 20 years, 18 years on air, you would normally get an ethics committee investigation and maybe get a slap on the wrist. What I'm saying is Democrats do stuff light years worse. It's clearly politically motivated. And the day that broke, I had Bob Barr on two weeks ago, that Thursday, and six hours later it broke about Dinesh D'Souza, who has movies coming out basically exposing Hillary Clinton this summer and then the next year. And they're scared of that. So I'm not a fan of Chris Christie, basically a Democrat. But because he's in the way of Hillary, they're going after him for a crooked toenail for what some underlings did. So this is the Clinton machine, folks. And I'm so sick of him. We've got the guy on who was able to start the impeachment and who had the courage on that Thursday to say that he would, there's clearly evidence for impeachment if he gets back in. And he's in the front runner right now, but cross your fingers. You know, don't, uh, you know, don't think he's, you know, that, it, that, that it's in the bag. He needs to win by a large margin because there's so much election fraud. Bob Barr, and the reason I've been salivating over this is with his knowledge, I predict when he gets back into Congress, if you like what Ted Cruz and Rand Paul have been doing, it's going to be explosive. Because believe me, it'd be like having Ron Paul back in Congress again. We, we need people that know where the bodies are buried and who've been exposing the NSA. All of it, it was Bob Barr, folks. So uh, Bob Barr joins us. You heard that breakdown, Congressman, about to be back in Congress, hopefully, of the persecution. You talked about that and warned of that six hours before it happened. Had you been given inside knowledge or did you just feel that in the wind? Uh, thanks uh, once again for being on the show uh, to uh, you know share some ideas with uh, with you and your many many listeners, uh, Alex. Um, no, I simply uh, I simply know how government operates, uh, and as our founding fathers knew, the fundamental nature of government and the fundamental task for many of those in government doesn't change over the ages. Our founders studied uh, societies, and they studied governments going back to ancient times all the way up to what was then for them the modern era with the uh, the monarchies in, uh, in Europe and the colonial uh, powers and so forth. And they knew how government operates. They knew that left to its own devices, government inevitably becomes corrupt. Uh, and they knew that, uh, that government after government after government over over the, over the ages, over the millennia, uh, will seek to inevitably gain more and more control over the populace. That is the nature of government, and that is the nature of people in government. Your parallel to the Nixon years is, is, is frighteningly uh, apropos. Uh, Nixon truly believed that he was above the law. Uh, this administration truly believes, this president, that is, truly believes that he is above the law. And even worse than Nixon, he is proud of that fact. I mean, this guy takes the well of the House of Representatives door and during the State of the Union basically figuratively thumbs his nose at the Congress and the American people and says, I don't care what the law says. I don't care what the Constitution says. I don't care about limited government. I don't care about the oath of office I took. I'm going to do what I want because I am the only one that can do it. I mean, it is outrageous uh, what this president is doing, and this new move also to to go after uh, conservatives uh, with the the might of the government. <laughs> Excuse me is, again, frighteningly sim similar to, except even worse than what Nixon did in developing a list of political enemies. I mean, what, they, what they're doing to Dinesh D'Souza is, is 
absolutely outrageous uh, what they're what they're doing to him. Uh, and we know, as you indicated, you know, Chris Christie may not be our favorite, uh, but uh, they uh, he's now in uh, in their in their gun sights. Not only going after him with so-called exposés, but uh, I'm sure that they're in contact with these various local Democratic government officials in New Jersey to make these ridiculous uh, allegations about him and so forth. And Republicans need to do something that Republicans normally don't do, and that is to support each other. Uh, I can't tell you how frustrating it was, Alex, for example, back during the impeachment of Bill Clinton, uh, when when I was virtually alone out there calling uh, for first the impeachment inquiry and then the actual impeachment of the president, when the Clinton administration unloaded uh, its 50 cows against me, uh, gathered information, sent Larry Flint and all these other out, other guys out there uh, against me, uh, I didn't get a single call, a single offer of help uh, from any Republican in the House. Uh, and Republicans have to learn that when the Democrats go after our people, uh, we need to support them. Now, that doesn't mean blind support. That doesn't mean if you have a public official who's a Republican who truly is violating the law, then we do stand for the rule of law and there ought to be a prosecution. What I'm talking about is when the Democrats go after our people. Well, look at Tom uh, DeLay. What he did was complete. For partisan political yeah. purposes, we need to support them, and we haven't done that in the past. Well, exactly. I mean, look at Tom DeLay. Tom DeLay, because, I mean, I follow campaign finance law. I follow the news for 20 years. What he did is 100% normal, completely standard, but they had the corrupt district attorney on record that prosecutes conservatives and libertarians all over the state go after him and, and, and spend millions of dollars and three trials, and he finally, you know, finally won. But like you said last time, how do you get your name back? While meanwhile, the Democrats do whatever they want because Republicans will never go after them. To the point of Bill Clinton, with all the sexual predator stuff, not just sexual harassment, but settling cases of rape and all this, and then he's their number one fundraiser. They have no shame. The Republicans could destroy the Democrats on Benghazi, destroy them on Fast and Furious, destroy them on Obamacare, destroy them on open borders, destroy them on Solyndra, destroy them, but they won't because they all just want to play ball like Boehner up there, patty caking everybody it is incredible it is incredible well i'm glad i'm glad you mentioned my good friend tom delay uh and i was one of the few people that uh you know that supported him throughout the uh, the, the the persecution that he underwent of course i was talking to him recently and he said now he's got all sorts of friends that want to help him yeah. uh, where they when when he needed them but that is a prime example of what they did to tom delay and they will do it over and over and over again they're they're doing it to Republicans now, and we simply, uh, uh, our people, will not stand up. They get, allow themselves to be browbeaten like Hillary Clinton browbeat the uh, the committee when she was before them on Benghazi, uh, saying, "What difference does what it make?" What difference does uh, it make? What the, we yeah. see it over and over and over again. It's disgusting. I, and again. If Republicans get into power and they're violating the Bill of Rights Constitution, I'm going to speak out like you've done. It's that the Democrats are going for broke because they can see the world's waking up to them, that there's a major libertarian awakening worldwide that the Financial Times, Pew Research, everyone sees it for real constitutional ideas, what made America great, what made America have soft power, what made America be respected worldwide. People are hungry for that, including in government and the corporate world, and they can feel the fact that that they are in trouble, and, and that's why they're going for broke. Do you agree with that statement? Absolutely. Uh, it is absolutely tr true. I see it in, in, in my race. I see it in other races uh, going on uh, around the country. Uh, the Democrats are, are sort of like uh, the old uh, Fabian Society in the, in the U.K. Uh, they, uh, they simply work their way into the bureaucracies. They're like the United Nations. They work their way in, uh, and they know that they can outlast their opponents uh, because their, their opponents will wear down, will leave office, and so forth. So they just outlast them. The Democrats uh, know that, and they also know they know how to go for the jugular, uh, and very few of our people do, uh, Alex.
Now, I want to play a clip of uh, Rand Paul, the senator, soon to be one of your colleagues again. Again, I don't want to count our chickens, but I want to come back from this break in a minute and, and talk about the campaign and some of the other uh, issues out there and what uh, you recommend we do about it and strategy. But Rand Paul is getting more hardcore. When you're faced with tyranny, say it. And he recently said Bill Clinton's a sexual predator uh, and that... Uh, we should not be, uh, you know, tolerating him being the Democratic Party's front man, which is what you would expect libertarian Republicans to do if they really wanted to win. They would talk like you're talking. They would talk like Ted Cruz. They would talk like Rand Paul, whose polls go up. I mean, that's what's even incredible. These Republicans won't even do the right thing when it will catapult them to success. It's just I don't understand the bubble that they're in, and I want you to explain that to me in a moment, but first, let's play this Rand Paul clip from C-SPAN last night. It's up on DrudgeReport.com and uh, get Congressman Bob Barr's take on it and his his statement on Bill Clinton, who he, who he almost, he got him indicted in the House, but not convicted in the Senate. Uh, but let's go to that clip of Rand Paul. Senator, let me follow up on two final points. First of all, you made some headlines when you referred to former President Bill Clinton as, quote, a sexual predator, and one of your colleagues, Senator Claire McCaskill, said that your comments were, in her words, infuriating. Your reaction? Well, Senator McCaskill needs to remember what she had to say about Bill Clinton, that she wouldn't want her daughter in the same room with him. So they can't have it both ways. The Democrats can't say, oh, we're the great defenders of women's rights in the workplace, and we will defend you against uh, some kind of abusive boss that uses their position of authority to take advantage of a young woman when the leader of their party, the, leader fu the leading fundraiser in the country, is Bill Clinton, who was a perpetrator of that kind of sexual harassment. You know, so they can't have it both ways. And so I, I really think that uh, anybody who wants to take money from Bill Clinton or have a fundraiser has a lot of explaining to do. In fact, I think they should give the money back. If they want to take a position on women's rights, by all means do. But you can't do it and take it from a guy who is using his position of authority to take advantage of young women in the workplace. I mean, for goodness sakes, he paid an $800,000 fine for sexual harassment. That's right. So he admitted to it in one court case and really I think has been convicted in the public place for the other the other sexual harassment. So so Hillary's coming back. I mean for me th this is such a no-brainer and I like how the senator didn't back off when he was attacked as the incredulous reporter like how dare you say the sky is blue and the sun is yellow? How dare you say grass is green? Congressman Bob Barr, uh, what is your take uh, on what he said, and would you like to expand your remarks on that? Uh, definitely, Alex. Thank you. And I had to deal with uh, sort of another aspect of this just this morning. I was on a uh, an MSNBC interview with Chuck Todd, and he was referring back to the uh, impeachment uh, as uh, what the Democrats tried back then to avoid impeachment, and that is, oh, this is just sexual picadillos. Uh, so they're they're resurrecting that now to inoculate uh, Clinton, uh, Hillary Clinton, and Bill Clinton once again, uh, as you know and I know, and I think most Americans realize both at the time, but maybe we need to remind them. Bill Clinton was not impeached for personal behavior. He was impeached because he violated federal criminal laws on obstruction of justice and uh, perjury. Uh, and that's why. And if we need to remind the American people of that, then we need to remind the American people of that. You know, with regard to the evidence of uh, sexual uh, being a sexual predator, we had in the House file drawer after file drawer after file drawer of evidence and information that the star uh, uh, folks uh, had, the special uh, prosecutor, uh, independent counsel rather, had pulled together uh, that, uh, uh, you know, I can't go into detail because there's a House resolution that prohibits any of that from being made public. But a lot of it leaked. It was biting women, raping them, choking them. Oh, I mean, it was, I mean, it was, it was awful. Uh, and yet we were pre prevented by the Senate uh, from using any of that in the impeachment uh, trial uh, in the uh, in the in the Senate. Uh, so there is evidence there. I mean, it is, it is more than clear, uh, more than beyond a reasonable doubt what uh, what this man uh, was and may very well still be. What do you think, people that are just pro freedom, beyond libertarian, beyond conservative? A kind of Thomas Jefferson type liberals. What do you think we should do? We're going to break and come back with a few minutes on the other side with you on other issues. But what what should we do to get back on the offense? 
certainly support some of the people that you've just mentioned, like Rand Paul and Ted, and Ted Cruz. And we also need to, uh, you know, Call call these issues what they are. When they are going after people uh, like uh, like uh, like Chris Christie, you know, go after him on the facts. Go after him on his decisions and his votes and so forth. That's fine. But going after Republicans simply because they're Republicans and simply because they have the backbone and the resources to.